So this has to be one of the most hotly anticipated bikes for 2019, BMW S1000RR. And do you know what? This bike is one of the most popular with Knox customers. I mean, you know, the amount of tags that we get on our Instagram page with people wearing Knox Androids uh, riding this motorcycle or previous generations of, it's phenomenal. And it's widely considered as probably the king of the track or certainly uh, you know, it's up there with the top, and you know, certainly when the first generation came out, it really changed the rule books, well, you, didn't it? You, I mean, it's it's difficult to believe, isn't it? This bot, the original RR is eight, nine years old now. So when it when yeah. it kind of hit the roads in 2010, it just kind of blew the competition away. Um, yeah. You know, kind of just changed the landscape for for sport bikes completely. You know, they they, they were able to produce a bike that not only had a massive amount of performance and you could take it to a track and thrash it and have a great day out, but it had incredibly good road manners. Of course. You know, they, 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 they kind of made that sort of combination of a usable super bike, uh, better than anybody else. You know, so this, this has got a lot to live up to. And of course, in the meantime, Yamaha, Ducati, Kawasaki, Suzuki have all had to massively up their game to kind of keep pace and even perhaps in some cases overtake the existing S1000RR. But of course, this, I'm expecting is going to be another game changer. Um, well, one of the things that the original was quite, um, you know, one of the uh, rules that it changed, I suppose, was on the electronics game. 100%. And and that's uh, upped the game massively to this latest well, the, generation. Yeah, the, I mean, I mean the, the, the seismic shift in the amount of electronic yeah. aids on these bikes now. Again, you know, I, I think, honestly, you know, when, when Ducati launched their new V4 last year, again, they sort of just pushed the game forward massively and, and that had a massive part to do with how many electronic features the bike had, gyroscopic sensors and IMU and not only that I think the, one of the things that, uh, uh, that sort of serious uh, you know uh, track day junkies had, had stated was that they wanted the bike to be more sort of tailored to their own needs so sure. so it's not a question of whether or not you just turn the traction control off or you can adjust the ABS there is a raft of, 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 of well, options. It's the degree to which oh, you want all of those I things mean, right? You know tiny incremental adjustments on all those different different sensors and, and different aids on the bike and of course we, we were lucky enough to get one of the guys from BMW up here I think yesterday the day before he sort of take, gave us a bit of a rough guide of how it all operates and of course it's actually very easy to use as well. Really easy all you, um, all you do is literally just push that, um, push that thumb dial, you know, to, to alternate between your, your menu options, and then twist a little. It's, it's quite uh, similar to the BMW iDrive system you'd yeah, see in the it, car, it, really, it, isn't it? It, it is. And I think Obviously, they're lifting some of that from that whole car technology and putting well, it into the motorbike. There, there are some other similarities because, but basically, what BMW have done with this new double R is they've launched a standard bike. This one next to us in the red, yes, which is I think about sixteen and a half, sixteen seven. Um, and then they've gone with the M Sport so now. M Sport. That's some... really competitive for oh. a, a superbike, well, actually. Okay. It's a very similar price to the, the R1, in fact. Yes, and, and, and you know, I mean, we're going to, we're obviously, hopefully, with enough time and opportunity, we're going to go and have a look at what Ducati are doing, their yes. new V4Rs on the stand. And, you know, price wise, it's, I mean, it's pretty eye watering, isn't it? Let's yeah, be honest. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, value for money, uh, as it stands, I mean, this is subject to people being able to ride the bike and test it. You are, I mean, that does look on the face of it to be a lot of bike. Yeah. Um, the other similarity that you, you just touched upon with the kind of you know the overlap with the cars and the bikes for BMW is that this is now going to be badged as an M Sport, Aaron. And yes. You know that that's a theme that has been going with the cars for ever and a day basically. Yeah. So M Sport effectively just takes that spec a, a step further. So new new paint scheme, uh, new seat like a grippier, stiffer seat, um, carbon wheels. So carbon you know, it's all wheels. about kind of making the bike even more performance focused lighter wheels uh, and then of course it's got this full suite of electronics this has also got um, an option where you can attach some sort of GPS sensor so wh whereas with the uh, the standard bike your lap timer is operated by your high beam that that starts and stops your lap timer you okay. can attach to this either on the side or I think in in the seat cowl um, a GPS function which will actually time for you now there's there's some uh, uh, consternation yeah, around yeah, that. Yeah. You know, not really meant to be doing that on track days, but okay. it is an option that's available for this one. I don't know whether it's available for the standard bike. We'd have to double check that. Yeah. Um, okay. But I, it, it would be remiss. You know, this is a brand new bike. Yes. You know, I think from from start to finish. Absolutely new chassis, new engine. They've saved how much weight? So uh, 10 kilos, 10 kilos wet, and then of course they've increased the power to 207, which is 10, 10 horsepower up as well. Um, it's also the shift cam technology, so again, that's yes. kind of transferred across some GS and, and the new RS and the R, 
So it, you, 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 you should have well, this kind of more flat torque curve, more mm. linear power delivery. You know, I think you know what a lot of the manufacturers are doing, and we touched on this the other day when we were talking about KTM. You know, they've listened to their customer base. Customer base said, you know what, um, it's a bit too choppy on the road. Uh, you know, it's not adjustable enough, and the power delivery wants to be a bit just at that torque curve. That delivery wants to be smoother, and of course that helps in terms of you know being able to modulate your throttle when you when you're really at it. And that's what they've done. They've addressed that too, so you get a much flatter torque curve. You know, this 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 power all the way across the rev yeah. range. Sure, but that's also controllable with with the new electronics. So you can oh, absolutely you can you can really hone the power delivery. You can really hone the traction control. Yeah. You can really hone the ABS. I'm Obviously, you can't turn it off uh, entirely because now nowadays we have to have it I'm not, I'm, uh, on, I'm not, on all not, new bikes. That's what the guy was saying yesterday. Yeah. You can't turn it off entirely. Absolutely. You can turn it down to the minimum um, for, for for track use. But you, you can't I mean, turn it can it off make entirely. you look like a massive hero. Oh, so so even even you and I, Aaron, maybe yeah. more so me because I am hopeless, could could ride this reasonably fast and not come a cropper so you, you know you've got lean angle sensor you've got i think is it 14 different settings on the traction control wheelie control it's bonkers um uh, yeah it, uh, you, you can you can tailor hey, this grips, bike right do you get, do you get oh, and, and, i mean look this is a this is a typical kind of bmw <laughs> train you know you're preaching to the converted here aren't you right, you know yeah. what i'm like with bmws and I, I don't want to appear unbiased but having traction control and cruise control tra sorry he heated seats and uh, heated grips and cruise control on a bike is something that i just kind of it's almost like a given for me, right. you know, riding BMWs. But yeah, a bit swish. It's a hugely, hugely important bike. This is, and I, you know, I've got to say, I, I'm not a sport. I'm not, you know, traditionally, I'm not a sport bike fan. But this is a very, very exciting motorcycle. Quick commentary, Mark, on the aesthetic. What do you think? Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot of talk about this, isn't it? Of course, that you know, one of the things that was a bit sort of opinion dividing at the time when they were, when they launched the original S thousand was this asymmetric headlight. It's kind sure. of weird goggly eyes if you like and now of course it's fully symmetrical i've got to say in the flesh it is a really nice looking bit it of is. kit um, it is. and i like the colorways i'm not, i'm sure given enough time i mean know, do you know they'll, what they'll, they'll introduce new colors on the bike as as it kind of comes into the range over the next year or two it's got an absolute coffin of a, a cat on the bottom of it i wish they'd have hid that a little bit better well i mean i must is, be honest this um, is the interesting that's, that's the only thing yeah but for me i love i love every other other part of it really I, and actually the end can is quite is quite okay as well well you know for a fact that almost every person who buys one of these is going to put some kind of system on it and of course the the, the other advantage of changing the exhaust system whether it's a full or it's a you, you're going to make a more a bigger weight saving yeah so you, you can do you know five plus kilos by just taking it taking the exhaust system off and putting a more performance orientated system on there so you know you, you're talking about you know something with a really Really, really sensible curb weight, and you know another bike that makes well north of 200 horsepower. You know, and in fact, um, I was looking at one of the reviews, and that you know the, the guy who's involved in the development said, if it says it's 207 horsepower, it's BMW. It will be 207 horsepower, and of course, you know that is important. You know, in a kind of top trump scheme of things, you know this is bike is fairly, is squarely focused at Ducati's V4. Yeah. The other thing they've done also is they've tried to they tried to trim the the, the breadth, the width of the chassis. It's they've a wrapped bike. wrapped it right around the engine so that when you're on it, it feels a lot narrower. Yeah. So you can really yeah. grip it. And he was talking about how you know under hard braking, it allows you to brace better on the bike. So you just feel like you've got more control over the mm. thing when you're at it. Obviously, a massively important part of these bikes, not how well it goes, how well yeah, it really stops, stops yeah. as well. And uh, the whole new braking system as well on this S1000RR. So they've moved from Brembo's into their brand new calipers and braking system that, yeah. They, yeah. that they developed themselves. And they actually uh, saying that this is an improvement from the previous system. Now, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, I rode the S1000R, and I have to say that's got the that's got the Brembo's, Brembo's on yeah. it. Yeah. But they, they were the best brakes I've ever had on a motorcycle. I was like. I pressed them, I was like, bloody hell, I yeah. nearly did a stop here, it was unbelievable. Yeah. So if these are an improvement on that, you know, hey, I don't think they're going to le left their customers short, right? No, no, and I think, you know, some people are going to be quite surprised by that. I mean, you know, Brembo, it's the company that most of the performance bikes put on their, put on their, um, most of the performance bike companies put on their motorcycles. Having said that, you know, again, from what I've read and the research and what I've seen, they're saying that this is an improvement. And I think, I think it's kind of small tweaks. Yes. You know, it's, it's not just about how, how much retardation that brake can offer you, but it's about how it feels on the lever. Sure. So it's more linear. Again, it's, you can modulate it in a better way when you're, that initial bite is kind of more graduated. So sure. it just, just gives you a bit okay. more feel, a bit more control, essentially. Yeah. That's effectively what they're saying that they've managed to achieve with this new system. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the first test that people are going to be looking at are this, is, this versus the V4. It's going to be a really interesting landscape, isn't it? And again, it means that the other manufacturers are going to have to raise their game even more because, you know, let's be frank, this is going to be one 
hell of a bike on the road. And that's the other trick, isn't it? Getting that balance right between having something that's an amazing track weapon and having a bike that's going to be phenomenal on the road as well. You'd have to wait and see.